Good evening. I'm Julian. We are Pearson College students and I'm originally from Brazil. I'm from Jordan. Um, our college is part of an international movement called United World Colleges, which have a mission of making education a force to unite people, nations, cultures for peace and a sustainable future. That's why we are really happy to be here tonight in behalf of the World Harmony Run to, because the, the both movements have the purpose of making a world peace. Although the run here tonight was very short, we hope to join with others in the separate to Victoria, Victoria World uh, Harmony Run. Thank you. and it goes every two years and last year we ran from um, Tofino through Victoria, uh, Galeano Island and then on to Vancouver and then it went across Canada but it runs all over the world simultaneously so it covers um, all, all 50, kind of like more, no, about 85 countries around the world so far so it's been the most inspiring thing in my life and I was lucky enough to be able to organize the first one, one of the organizers for the first one, and then I ran across Canada in 1989 with the girls' team. So it was it took four months, um, and we ran about 10 miles a day each, and then till 3 o'clock, and then the boys took it till about midnight every day for four months. So it was great. Yeah, it was really wonderful. So, so we practiced harmony in the team as well. So we tried to manifest <laughs> harmony on the team as well as cast harmony, hopefully, around the world. So thank you. It's been great. Thank you, Pearson College. Um, we hope to include you next spring because 
I think next spring the Americans are going to come up and they want to join us in the run, so it'll be really powerful. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Um, we wanted to uh, do something special for the students from Pearson College. And so uh, we know you're having an event tomorrow, and we wanted to honor um, you. So what we did was we created a bouquet of flowers that we hope you'll be able to use tomorrow. And amongst the bouquet of flowers, every flower has a meaning that would help promote and support peace. So to the students of Pearson College, these flowers are a symbol of our gratitude, and we honor your passion for peace. Thank you. The red rose is love. The white rose is humble. The yellow rose is friendship. The pink rose is grace. The dark pink rose is gratitude. The red and white rose combined is unity. The red and yellow rose is joy and happiness. Iris is all about good news. The oak leaf is strength. And I had a bit of a challenge because I would have had to go to Spain to get an olive branch, which I would have done, <laughs> but I didn't really have time to do that. And, or Holly, I would have had to go and steal it, and I didn't think the alternative of landing in jail would be a good idea either. So what we were able to do is Doreen came up with the wonderful idea of placing a piece of in the bouquet. So the peace stuff is peace. So I'd like to ask uh, the students to come up to accept this bouquet and our gratitude for the work and your studies and for our support for everything you're doing. And when you go back to your countries, we know that you take a bit of us with you because you've been here with us. Enjoy these tomorrow during your um, event, and uh, there's the part that goes with it. Thank, Thank you very much. of violence and conflicts that are now happening in our world today, there's never been a better time to have the window of opportunity to promote this initiative in Canada. This department would develop a new architecture of peace by supporting and establishing activities that promote a culture of peace and assertive nonviolence in Canada and the world. Drawing on inspiration from those countries that have ministers of peace already, Nepal, Costa Rica, South Sudan, and working with more than 30 countries, we anticipate that the Canadian Ministry of Peace mandate would include the following objectives, and I'm only going to give you a few. Leading internationals to abolish nuclear, biological, chemical weapons, and to reduce weaponry in space, implement the UN Declaration of Programs of Action on a Culture of Peace that was already written up in 1999, and to safeguard human rights and enhance the security of persons and their communities. So we want to dedicate 
We, we are dedicated to generating the political will for this initiative by reaching out not only to politicians, but to the broad spectrum of our citizens, including peace and justice organizations, faith communities, artists, choirs, healthcare professionals, teachers, service clubs, cultural communities, and businesses. Twelve chapters presently exist across Canada. Canada is a founding member of the Global Alliance for the Ministry of Department of Peace. And in pursuing this initiative, we recognize that the crisis facing humanity is not only social, political, economic, and environmental, but also spiritual in nature. We believe that creating a culture of peace is an ongoing and long-term process. So on that note, I think I will stop. And uh, we're very privileged to have, are we having a little trouble here? We are? <laughs> well, why don't I do this and then you find out? Okay, we, we, have, we have lots of other things like to that do. That's how you do it, right? We are in, in nature. <laughs> yeah, so Kathleen, did you want to yeah, we can work do. with, okay. Uh, we can do the, okay. No, never did. <laughs> Um, what I'm here today to speak to you about is a, um, a project. <laughs> well, what happened? <laughs> Geneva is offline. Oh, it's Geneva. <laughs> oh, it's Geneva. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just we'll. I want to just present this. Uh, before we actually play it. Um, a little bit about the project. This uh, World Children's Summit on Peace and Nature is going to be held here in Victoria in 2014, September 2014. And uh, we are sort of announcing that today. And the Department of Peace is a, has been very, very supportive of uh, this initiative. We'll be bringing 320 children together between the ages of 10 and 14 and they will be exploring relationship and making friends through experiences. How this came to be, this fountain here went across Canada and there are over 10,000 wishes for peace in this fountain by Canadian school children. And I interviewed 400 of those children and then from what they shared with me, designed the workshops for the uh, World Children's Summit. I didn't want, I wanted it to be led by their thoughts, not what we as adults think it should be, but if it came from them, I felt, them, I felt that it would go a lot further. So we're doing story and uh, culture and storytelling. We are working with uh, nature and photography, and they're going to be taking pictures of nature, and the workshop that uh, Francis Littman will be doing will actually help them uh, hopefully see that they are part of nature and not separate from it. Then their images will be turned into, they'll choose an image that will be turned into a mandala. So we will have a visual a lens through their eyes, this wonderful, lovely mandala. Uh, Amy Lindstrom is doing a workshop on labyrinth and uh, contemplation, and there'll be a lot of exciting pieces that will happen with that, and they'll be learning to play the ukulele and take it home. So we're really excited. We've got one of the keynote speakers, Dr. Uh, Robert Bateman. We have a young man who's 12 years old from uh, Oklahoma. His name is Aiden Anderson, and Miranda Anderson is from uh, Delta, and she will, they'll be speaking as keynote speakers to the children. We will live stream this summit right across the world. Now the animation that you're going to see is a piece that we wanted to create that would be a visual that actually we hope would sell the whole story in less than a minute. It has been a long, a lot of work and Sean Newman has, uh, Newton has done this and his wife Anne is at the back and I'm telling you there is no way anybody that puts that kind of work into anything isn't growing wings because it, what an angel. And uh, we talked a long, long time about what does this look like so that when people viewed it, 
they would understand that this is really about the story those children told me. 80% of the 400 interviewed said they went to nature to feel peaceful. They spent the other 20% of their time, it would be playing music, it might be doing a, uh, playing hockey or playing an instrument or singing and spending time with their families. When they closed their eyes and described the kind of world they wanted to live in, they saw green grass, every single one of them. They all saw flowers, some saw rainbows. They all saw people with smiles on their faces. Some of them recycled. And the one thing I wasn't ready to hear, and I didn't quite know what to do with it when I heard it, um, was that they felt safe. And this summit will address that. We will be asking, what does safe look like to you? What can, what can you do to help feel safe? That's certainly not something that I know as a child that I worried about. So it's really an important thing that our children around this world can feel safe. So this is a rough cut, and there's going to be more done to it, but I'm sure you will enjoy, and you will certainly get the essence and the feel of what it is that we want to help support the children um, from around the world and here at home. So to Sean, I'm telling you he's at home right now sleeping, but you know, my blessings like forever. <laughs> starts to talk to them, their heart starts to race, anxiety sets in, and really, you know what, just chill, because, you know, there's nothing really important in life that one needs to become extremely angry about and have that, do that to yourself. And um, so I always see, see this as opportunities. Um, I get stuck in traffic and I just spend time with myself. I spend a lot of time with myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you know, what an opportunity to have the students from Pearson here. And the Getting Higher Choir, they are all around the world. I had a wonderful conversation this, this morning with the choir leader, that, and um, she told me about it. And when we were speaking, it's what a chance for people to that maybe never had really used their voice, but they use it in song. And the best part about that is everybody gets to enjoy it. So often, as, she, as, as Mary Wynn shared with me, is that we've come to be a, um, a society of listening to professional artists, that you have to you know, raise to a certain level of expertise before you get to be heard by the world. Well, wow, you put 300 people together and you start singing that song, and I, any song, and I don't think that you can stop tapping your toes or wanting to dance. And what a beautiful way, and I thank you, choir members, and I thank you, Mary, for being here tonight and, and showing by example, you know? How, how voice and song can just change your stark landscape as a story of, you know, 
close your eyes and what do what do you want to see in your world and then the green grass came and the dove became that symbol to drop the olive branch into the child's hands and then of course our support as folks here in this wonderful province and in this city to come together to help work at this is create the summit so they can uh, come to have friendships. Because really there's, ever, there's never anything to be afraid of once you know somebody and relationships in person far exceed the internet. <laughs> so we're really <laughs> Happy because look at what the you know the internet doesn't always you know come on board right. Anyway, um, to plant the seed of the World Children's Summit on Peace in Nature, we're really grateful that it can be done here in this fertile ground of not only a beautiful environment but of amazing amazing people with huge hearts that care. Uh, okay, can we hear from Penny and Saul yet? Because they're probably sick of hearing about we talk. <laughs> Maybe we can't. We could, we've got singers that want to sing, so why don't we do that? I would rather, actually, that's beautiful. And, and I just wanted to thank Sarah, Sarah Lee. She gave me these beautiful flowers. She's one of my big fans. from what I saw on, you can go to uh, um, the Department of Peace website, I'll post it to their Facebook later if you go home, and um, they'll, the message is there, and they just want to say hi to everybody, they wish they were here, of course they thought that it's kind of nice where they are in Geneva too, and they're having a wonderful, wonderful time, and um, they're meeting incredible people, and they're having fabulous conversations. So I'm sure there'll be wonderful things that come out of the summit and we'll get to hear from them again. That means we can gather and have another party. It's all about that. My name is Mary Lynn Ashford, and I think I'm here actually for two reasons. Um, one is that the leaders of the Get and Hire Choir were not able to come, and they gave me this great privilege of conducting this part of the choir today, and I really am hugely honored, and I know you'll, you'll feel the same way when you hear them sing. Uh, the Get and Hire Choir is one of a worldwide network of community choirs. Community choirs are not auditioned. If you want to sing, you come and sing. So even if you were told in grade two, as I was, oh, please just mouth the words, don't sing, uh, you're welcome in the Get and Hire Choir, and over a short period of time, you discover that you actually can sing, you can raise your voice. And the goal of the choirs, the network is called Ubuntu, meaning community, um, I am because we are, uh, the goal of those choirs is to build community through singing together. And the music that we sing is designed for the same purpose. So it, that's one of the reasons that I'm here. The second reason, whoops. The second reason. Yeah. Second reason? <laughs> the second reason that I'm here is that I've been a peace and disarmament activist for more than 30 years and I adore the United Nations. I've been there many times on conferences on, particularly on nuclear disarmament. And I just want to say, um, in the beginning I was all about protest. And after working with the Canadian delegation from the government, this is um, previous governments starting in 1988, working with our government delegations gave me a huge respect for Canada's role internationally and a huge respect for those individuals at the UN. They are totally committed to the peace process and to building uh, peace and to building treaties 
even though it means staying up 24 hours a day on the last day of an official conference in order to get the wording so that everyone will agree. So I've been very, very inspired by my time there by people like Ambassador Douglas Roche and uh, Stephen Lewis when he was our ambassador at the UN. So I'm a big promoter of the United Nations. A year ago right now, I was in Busan, Korea for a UN conference with young people age 14 to 19, 500 of them. And at the end of my talk, I asked them all to stand and I would teach them the song that I'm now going to teach to you. So I'm going to ask the choir to come up to the front and then I'll ask the audience to stand up if you'd like to, I hope that you'd like to. In Korea, this is the response that I got when I said, would you all like to stand now please? And, <laughs> and yawned and stood up. And then when they started to sing, and I had the music on the PowerPoint, I could tell that they were absolute expert sight singers. So it was a beautiful experience to have 500 young people all singing just beautifully. So will the choir please come up now behind me, just in the semicircle here. So that means I sing a line and the choir will sing it with me and if they don't then they'll sing it as we sing back. So I'll sing and you sing back and hopefully they'll sing both times. <laughs> okay, so here's our first note. Stand up if you will, thank you. Okay, so this song goes one more step. One. one more step, I will take one more step, till there is peace on earth for everyone, I'll take one more step. This song got me through a lot of tough times in disarmament, I can tell you that. The next verse is the same except you substitute song. I will sing one more song, till there is peace on earth for everyone, I'll sing one more song. And then one more prayer, I'll say one more prayer, and then friend. I'll make one more friend. And then my favorite is check. One more check. I'll write one more check until <laughs> there is peace on earth. And then we go back to one more, song, one more step. Okay. I'll sing the first line, you sing it back to me. One more step. Okay, once again. One more step. 
that's okay. I'm not going to try to teach you Sia Hama, and you'll see why in just a minute. <laughs>
the Americans closed the base and that land has now returned to, uh, to be a, a commons, a British commons again. So this song is not a protest song. This is a song about building bridges. And again, I'll get you to stand up and I'll teach you it line by line. <coughs> the words go like this. <coughs> Sorry. Building bridges between our divisions. I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me? With all of our voices and all of our visions, friends, we will make such sweet harmony. So we'll sing it until we know it, and then we'll sing it three times after that. I'll show you we're singing three times after that, and I'll count down if I can remember to. And when we get to the last verse, the very last line, we repeat it three times, provided the director remembers to do that. So <laughs> and he'll help me if I forget. Okay, so if you'd like to stand up again, here's how it goes. is working. You want to know how incredible a person can manifest something? I have knowledge branch from Spain. How's that for me? How's that for a sign of, you know, we're doing the right thing here, right? Yes, a dear sweet friend of mine, David, he ran home when he heard that I didn't have an olive branch and his friend of his had sent him an olive branch from Spain two weeks ago. And he came back, ran back, and he said, here is an olive branch. So I just want to like share this olive branch with all of you. Um, yeah. And there was a couple of things I kind of left out and I, I really wanted to speak to it. Um, if you want to know more about the World Children's Summit on Peace and Nature, please just go to our website, www.worldchildrensummit.com, and there's information on the back there. You can, we're happy to have people come and join us and help us. And uh, also, I really wanted to acknowledge 
Ian Fawcett, who's here tonight with me. He's part of Change Canada Consultants, who have worked tirelessly okay, to uh, help us. All right, here we go. Ready? Okay, ready. Welcome, Victoria. From Penny Joy and Sol Argus, we're here in Geneva, attending the Global Alliance for Ministries and Infrastructure for Peace conference. It is an amazing conference. We wish you were here, but we also wish we were there with you. But we are all together celebrating the International Day of Peace. That's excellent. And here we are at this historic and memorable con conference where we have countries represented from all continents, all over the world, people moving together to create a culture of peace in all nations. The spirit of cooperation that we have seen here has been absolutely amazing. Everybody working together with a common vision and a common goal. Together, we can do it. May peace prevail on us. Yee-hoo! Well, with that, it's a wonderful intro into what we're going to do next, which is speak to the Peace Poll. And, uh, Inger, where are you? Oh my god, there you are. <laughs> and uh, Inger's going to tell us all about the Peace Poll. Hello, everyone. I've got notes, so I won't forget anything. <laughs> um, this is a mobile Peace Poll. And I'm just going to stand over here by the pole since I have this. Um, it's, um, what did it say? I, I think you might be able to see that at where you're sitting. May peace prevail on earth, it says in English and in French, which are our two official languages of Canada. And uh, internationally, internationally, um, some peace poles are planted in the ground and others are mobile and uh, they, are re they are recognized throughout the world as a symbol and monument of peace. So they stand six feet tall and uh, this one is, um, is the most notable one and you will see different types. Uh, some of them are hand carved and a lot of people go into a lot of of details about that. It's believed that, uh, that there are more than 250,000 peace poles around the world. And these peace poles are in almost every country on earth. And each country inscribed the peace pole in their own language, which is really interesting. So you will see every language uh, students from the college, uh, Pearson College, you will see your own country with, uh, have your own peace poll. Um, so with the words of the, let peace prevail on earth, the Japanese teacher and philosopher and author, see if I can pronounce this right, Masahisha Goy's vision came alive in 1955 when the first peace poles were planted in Japan. Masahisha Goye, who lived from 1916 to 1980, dedicated his life to peace and humanity. After witnessing the destruction of the Second World War, he started a world peace movement to spread the message and prayer, may peace prevail on earth, as a way to unite humanity. These messages uh, spread throughout Japan. Mr. Goy's adopted daughter continued the work, continued his work uh, after his passing and uh, at the year of his death in 1980, the first peace ball was planted outside of Japan and it was planted in Los Angeles. And we have peace balls in Victoria. The first one was planted at uh, Louise Taylor's uh, property in 1996. And uh, it's, it can be seen at the entrance to the yurt on the Old Sanis, Old West Sanis Road. The second one was planted at the Victoria High School, and the third one in Nanaimo. 
we know of at least 10 poles in, in Victoria and perhaps as many as 300 on Vancouver Island. <clears throat> so peace poles are planted on uh, public land, like uh, in schools, libraries, and others in private properties. And um, peace poles are seen from the North Pole to the pyramids in Egypt, to Robben Island in South Africa, where Nelson Mandela was incarcerated for 27 years, to Hiroshima, Japan, and Ground Zero in New York, and the United Nations headquarter, to mention just a few. And each peace pool stands as a proudly symbol of peace. Today we celebrate International Day of Peace, uh, all gathered here together. Um, how can we each use the peace pole? Uh, Louise Taylor said it beautifully, and I quote, each person is a peace pole. So she actually sees that each of us is a pole. And uh, for me, it's, it's um, if I stop any againstness, against someone or anything or something, I create peace inside. So this is a bit of a story and um, information about the Peace Pole and um, what we're going to do next, uh, what I'll do next is uh, read the Declaration of Peace. But before I do that, um, I want to mention to you that the Declaration is written out in, in paper and is placed on, that you can sign, which is placed on the table in the back where the globe is, and you can sign the Declaration of Peace, and um, you, you will see it waved in the back there. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, then you can sign it, and then place it, fold it up, and, and put it in the, in the globe. And so, um, the Declaration of Peace. I declare peace now within myself. I declare peace inside of our schools, our communities, and our families. I declare peace between all people of all races, religions, beliefs, countries, genders, abilities, and creeds. I am a peaceful and responsible person, and I take constructive actions to realize these declarations. Peace prevails on earth. So before I invite you to go and sign, um, and we have one more uh, thing that I would like to, to do something that's very special, and that is that If you come from another country than Canada, uh, please stand up and uh, say the name of your country and then say, let peace prevail on earth in your language. Then we will, we will repeat that in English and uh, let peace prevail in your country uh, and say the name of your country in English. So we will do that all together. And just as an example, I come from Denmark, and uh, so I, I would say in Danish, la fred vinde i Denmark, and then uh, we will all say, uh, let peace prevail in Denmark. So there might be some Danish students here. Is that Danish students? You can repeat, oh, well. Okay, kind of. <laughs> okay, somewhere else. Yeah, maybe Greenland or something. Somewhere. Okay, Greenland, okay. So uh, you can repeat it if you're Danish. This was just an example. So, uh, who would like to begin? Peace in, in Germany.
U.S., let peace prevail in the U.S. Let peace prevail in the U.S. I'm from Syria. Laila Salam Ya Hablu Fil May peace prevail in Syria. I'm from Jordan. Liam Tashir Salam Fadurazam. May peace prevail in Jordan. I'm from Brazil. Que a paz seja mantida no Brasil. And there's some brochures right. here that have it on. And uh, Ian did an amazing job of the website. We've been told it's really easy to maneuver. So I'm really grateful for that because it just makes it peaceful. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a peace book here that this has traveled with the family of peace all across the country Beautiful. and been in different places in Victoria. And you're welcome to sign it, please and as the declarations into the world. I know getting higher choir has to get it going, right? So thank you so much to Pearson College, Getting Higher Choir, Kathleen, Marianne, Ingra, Pedro and Will, who have worked so hard and on the technical issues we had tonight, Jerry and Ingra, who are, are volunteers from the um, uh, Department of Peace Initiative. Thank you all for coming out. Please uh, sign sign the declarations and stop and have some some food on the way out. We have some great uh, uh, nibbles. Thank you.